I got an email. I got an email. I got an exception email. Accepting email. Took out my laptop, snapped it open, looked through my emails. I got my visa. After this long couple of months, I got accepted. Two year work permit. Yeah. Woo! Mm. Canada, they grant me the visa. I'm in. Woo! The get I'm in, I'm in, I am in. Oh yeah, I'm in. Yeah, 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 woo! Oh yeah, oh yeah! Woo! Oh yeah! Welcome back to my channel. Today is story time. A month ago, I moved from Ireland to Canada. I was trying to apply for a two year work visa. It didn't come in time, so I had to go and get a six month holiday visa. So I booked a return flight for three weeks later. So when I got to the airport, they think I'm going holidays. If I got a one way, they might send me back home because they're like, well, he's on a holiday visa. Why is he coming over here with a one way ticket? So I got here. Continued to look for jobs anyway, while my visa could come any day. There is no possible way to know how far your visa has gone. I tried ringing the Canadian Embassy, the whole works, uh, emailing them, everything, and there's no way. You just gotta wait, wait, wait. I was waiting for maybe three months. Long story short, my work visa didn't come. I had to get a six month holiday visa and come over on that while I was waiting for my work visa, and then boom, Nearly three weeks in, visa was granted. I was like, yes, I was so happy because I was prepared to get denied and not be able to have the visa at all, which would have made it very complicated for me to get a job. Two and a half years ago, I was put off the road in Ireland for drink driving, and in Canada, you can go to jail for that. And anything that you go to jail for in Canada, can prevent you getting your work visa. Not only did I get accepted for a visa, it was like perfect timing. I got an interview for a job as a line cook, part-time, but he said it could end up being full-time afterwards. I was delighted. It was only a 20 minute walk from where I live, like 10 minutes on the sub. A spot called the Alley Cats. It was a jazz restaurant kind of bar thing. I went to the interview, your man was really sound. All the boys that worked there were really cool. They told me it was a great place to work. Got a really good vibe from being in there. I was like, yes, this is, this is class. Visa, job, it's all fall into place now. So then a couple of days later, I get a text. He says, you got the job. Are you able to come in on Wednesday for training? I said, yes, sir, I'm ready. So they've given me the go ahead to get the visa and to physically get the visa in my hands. I need to activate it. I need to do either two things, and that's leave the country of Canada to some other country and come back in again, or flagpole it, which is go to the border between Canada and the United States and cross that zone, no man's land. Is it, is it no man's land? I don't know. Down Niagara Falls, where I've been already, there is a big ass bridge called the Rainbow Bridge, and that actually crosses over to America. So when you're looking across the river and Niagara Falls is right there, and you're looking straight ahead, you're just looking into America, and you're standing in Canada. Right. Because I'd gone to Niagara Falls before, you get there on a bus from Toronto. Well, this is just one way you can go. It's the way I went. Um, you get dropped off at a casino, you have to go into the casino, and you get a 10 euro free bet, and the bus is 30 euro. But when I went in the last time, I registered, so I got a card, which means I get the bus for 10 euro if I ever want to return. So I was delighted I went through with that and got it because I got the bus for 10 instead of 30 and I got another 10 euro free bet which I didn't actually end up using the casino is huge by the way absolutely massive biggest casino I was in I actually got lost in it the first time I was in there so I head down to Chinatown get the bus boom over to Niagara Falls absolutely delighted with myself Downloaded Stranger Things the night before, season three. Started watching it on the bus. Got to Niagara Falls. It's about a 20 minute walk from the falls all the way to Rainbow Bridge. As I got closer and closer to Rainbow Bridge, I actually started to feel a bit afraid because the bridge is massive. It's awful high up like, and I was like, oh my God. All I seen was these little ants crossing over the bridge. People, oh my God. Like, I'm gonna have to walk across this bridge and it's 
massively high, like, and there's not much stopping you from falling off the edge. It was like a glass thing, majiggy, going across, so you could just see straight down. And I was like, oh my god, like I actually mightn't be able to cross here. Like I what like <laughs> imagine I have to go back to Toronto and get a flight because I was too afraid to go over the bridge. Which I actually was I was like, is this gonna happen? Look to hell with it, just go up to that bridge and try and do it anyway. So I went straight up to the border, whatever, crossed in, you need to change to actually like two bucks or something, two dollars. Ridiculous. I had to go back to the shop, didn't get changed, go back in again, poof, through the border, and I got to the bridge. I was okay, but I was pretty nervous. Went across, I was scared. So after getting across the bridge, by the way, I was well proud of myself and chuffed. Just went into the USA Border Patrol and I got my flagpole slip. Pretty nervous, but not as nervous as I am on this bridge. This is the Rainbow Bridge and I'm really afraid of heights and I am just shitting it now again. I was shitting it on the way over. I had a massive walk to even get to the bridge and all I could see was how high it was the whole way and now I'm on it and I have to stay in towards the edge. It's got to go over to the Canadian border now and see how long that takes. Hopefully everything goes okay. John Garvey, over and out. Got into the building, handed him the flag polling letter and next thing Hi, um, are we still accepting flag pullers? Uh, no, no more flag pullers today. What is going to happen now? They've just said no flag pullers. Now what happens? Sorry sir, we're not accepting any flag pullers today. If you just go over to that building over there and they can help you. Okay, thanks. Went over to the bigger building, went inside and... It was a nice calm atmosphere, it was cool, there was big time air con going in there, it was like really hot outside and you walk in then and it's pure cool. So I go up to the lady at the counter and I said, hi, I'm here at flagpole, gave her the forms, whatever, she bang, she goes, okay, sit down there and you'll be called. Sat down there, next thing she handed it to some other lady, an older woman. She calls me up and she says that there's complications with the visa. Now, I had been done for drink driving two and a half years prior to that. There's some complications here. Eventually, after four hours, must be on episode like three of Stranger Things at this stage. Oh, sir, by the looks of this application, you shouldn't have been granted your visa. What the flipping hell? Well, what, what, what can I do? Sorry, sir, but you're gonna have to come back at eight o'clock in the morning for an interview. An interview? Yeah, the person that normally deals with the interviews isn't in at the moment, so you're gonna have to come back at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in the morning. It was about five at this stage in the evening, maybe six. Okay, okay, whatever. What? What, what, what else could I do? So I went onto my phone, my clothes were all sweaty, my boxers, my socks, everything. It was pumping hot heat outside. So humid. It was just ridiculous. I had no spare change of clothes or anything. I was sick. So then I had to go onto Google Maps, I had to look up the cheapest motel I could find, or hostel, or hotel, or whatever the hell. Best Inn, or Niagara Best Inn, or something, was the cheapest one I could get. So I booked it. Walked up to it, the reception for the inn was actually closed down so the hotel next to it was dealing with all the, the customers. So I had to go over to that hotel, had to go in, get the key, got the key, went up to the room, the door wouldn't open. It wasn't the most luxurious looking uh, motel spot, I think it was one star. Went back over to the hotel, I'm sorry ma'am, but I can't open the door. So she called a guy and he said, oh we've actually had some complications with opening that door. We're gonna have to give him a room in this hotel if the motel door won't open. Yes, getting upgraded to a hotel here. But the motel was 50 bucks I think. So that was like 40 euro. So he gets the keys and he says, I'll try and if not, you'll, you'll have to stay in this hotel. And I just said, I do not want to stay in this hotel. I want to be in that motel. This is not acceptable. I did not pay to sleep in this hotel. When I went on Google, I simply asked to go over to that motel. It's my favorite motel in Niagara Falls and I want to stay there. Now, I don't care what you have to do or what customer you have to kick out of one of those rooms, but I am staying in that motel. Every time I come to Niagara Falls, I stay in that hotel. Caprende. I was just like, oh, nice one, please. Don't open door, don't open door. He just done this special thing and he just got the door open. I was like, Went in anyway, two double beds. It was okay looking, it was all right. Very basic, but it was good. Had very, very good air conditioning. So at this stage, I was pretty upset because there's a chance that my visa isn't gonna get accepted here. 
and they've just like built me up to this blow me down. So I, I, I was, I was, I was feeling a bit upset and went off and started comfort eating for myself. The two days I stayed in Niagara Falls, I got a KFC, a Popeye, and I got Wendy's. Popeye and Wendy's the first time. Like, I just peaked out. Like, I was on the pity party, I was feeling sorry for myself, really was. Stayed up late watching Stranger Things, got up the next morning, air conditioning was class. Eight o'clock for this interview, went straight down to the border, and in I went. They didn't see me till like 10 o'clock for this interview. What the hell? So finally at 10 o'clock this guy interviewed me. So this is the third person that I've been dealing with now at this stage. He just brings me on in, asks me questions, basically goes through everything again. Made me relive the time I got caught drink driving from start to finish. It was a horrifying experience. I thought I had dealt with that. It was in the past and it actually felt like really shitty. Tell him in detail what happened, blah, 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 and some things I'd forgotten, and he was like, well, I need to know, and I just couldn't tell him. That was all fine, and he goes, I'm gonna have to hand this on to somebody else. So we're dealing with my fourth person here now. The fourth person. I was like, what? So the interview was done, gone, new fella came in. Took my fingerprints, right? Every single one. Thumb, four fingers, thumb, four fingers. Got to go in and do it. Had to get a picture taken. I look so depressed in the picture. Should be up on the screen. It's actually gonna be the thumbnail of this video, I think. I get out, I'm just waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Calls me back in. I have to do the fingerprints all over again. Didn't come out right. He actually had to get each finger individually and hold it with his hand and I get it. I felt like a prisoner. I felt like I was about to go to prison for multiple years for doing something. I felt like a convict. Nine hours later from the interview at eight o'clock. They finally let me go. They tell me I have to wait for a hearing in Toronto. They seize my passport, they take everything, they take all my documents and stuff, and they tell me that I have to wait to get this hearing, that it'll be very soon. Then I look at the time. I'm not gonna get back in time to work in Alley Cats. Oh, shit. This was just a cool job. I wanted to get work as a waiter and I got a line cook. He told me that he'd let me out in the front sometimes if it got quiet. It was my perfect, like, gateway job it was like a gateway job into the waiting industry it was like oh it was just right there man so i rang him and i was like look told him exactly what happened and i'm not going to be able to make it in this evening though you should have rang me earlier do you know i have to ring people now all this crack i was like Ugh. phone call ended so i'm on the bus back it's like seven o'clock in the evening I text him I text him i say look i'm very sorry again i said um i can work any other time you want I'm, I'm nearly back now all this sort of thing he's like sorry i had to give it to the next person in line but if i have any more work i'll let you know again oh screwed it up so now i'm just been here it's been a week and a half later and still no phone call still nothing i don't even know who i'm supposed to ring i don't know who has it i don't know what going on what well, I'm sure is the Canadian Embassy but like there's just no details it just left me here like I actually had a flight home as well because I got the return flight for the next day so if they just said no that time I could have got the flight home or whatever so if they tell me I don't have the visa I'll say look I actually missed a flight over ye the whole lot I could have went home you could have told me this before like and the guys at the border said that like I was very unfortunate they said that this usually never happens like it was just a mistake from the guys up top or whatever you know the reason why it was such a big mix-up as well is because it turns out I actually wasn't done for drink driving at all I was actually done for being impaired to drive I think it is basically you're not able to drive it doesn't matter if you have a drink drug and whatever the hell's inside you they don't care so if I didn't have a drink or a drug or anything in my system I just wasn't able to drive the car. That's what I got done for. That's what I got put off the road for. I didn't know that. What the hell? Like, they didn't actually say that on the, the Garda Vet and the whole lot. It was being for being intoxicated. So, like, the Irish system freaked up, causing me to, like, just get this, like, nonsense. All because of the Irish system and them fecking up and getting things wrong. Now, poor Johnny is just here. Jobless, visaless, but just keeps on going. Never stop. Will I get the visa, not get the visa? I just really just, I want to get a, a job waitering or, or whatever. Cannot get really any other job at the moment with my back. There's plenty of work here. It's just all laboring and landscaping and all that sort of stuff. There is plenty of that. Like, I would say for anybody that's coming over here, there is plenty of that work you will get like that. Every day, they're just putting up 
labour and jobs, landscape and jobs, furniture moving jobs, it's just loads of it. Yeah, that's kind of the predicament I'm in, that's the update there. I just wanted to kind of fill everyone in on, on, on what's been going on and this is just crazy, like, unfortunate. Normally I get lucky in unluckiness, like, a lot of unlucky shit happens to me. But normally when I'm in that unlucky ball of negativity, badness, I get lucky and inside it and like get out of it somehow. Normally that's what happens. I might have possibly jinxed it now because I never say this. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully things go okay. Thanks for watching the video guys. Subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment if you want to talk about the visa, if you have any tips about the visa, if you have any complications with the visa yourself. I have had to go through a lot even before I was even like doing the visa when I was actually filling out the forms the whole lot. It's been quite a journey. So thanks for watching. See you later. This is my um, my convict form. Come, look at the press down. Look at that. Got loads of the sheets over there too, but it's gonna hold this up here while the while it gives you the my channel comes up here and the videos come up here. Just gotta do something at the end just to you know keep the ball going. Whatever, it's like 15 seconds, but gotta keep it going. Alright then. Oh. Alright. Ciao.